Welcome back to the Wine Podcast for everyone. We recorded this episode over a seven-day period, and it was a lot of fun. We did a little experiment to try and keep leftover wine at its peak. No special tools, no fancy systems, just a bottle and a stopper. Well, we did use a fridge and a freezer. We gotta assume everyone has one of those. Later on, Chuck features an Italian red, and I feature a popular red from California. From time to time, we'll find ourselves with some leftover wine at the end of the night. The question is, how do we keep it fresh for as long as possible? Or at least a few days. What do you usually do with an unfinished bottle of wine? So if I crack a bottle and I don't finish it, what ends up happening is I use that rubber wine stopper that you use the hand action pump, the suction pump on, and put it in the fridge. The next day, I'll usually polish it off. Maybe the day after that. So two, three days max. Two to three days, I'm looking to finish that bottle. Specifically reds, though. The whites, I find, keep pretty well in the fridge for up to like five days. Yeah. But the reds, I usually want to finish within three days of opening. Yeah. Okay. That's generally my experience as well. I'll tend to keep my... I keep my reds on the counter and my whites in the fridge, of course, because I want it chilled. So... What we wanted to do for this episode was figure out if the counter is best or the fridge is best. And we're going to go ahead and include the freezer. Now, I have never intentionally frozen wine to try and keep it for any length of time. No. The only time I put red wine in the freezer was if I was going to cook with it later on. I've I've left a bottle of white wine in too long and it got kind of slushy and it seemed to be fine when I took it out and thought it. What we're talking about here is we're going to intentionally freeze our leftovers. So to set the scene for you right now, I'm going to pour myself one taste of this bottle of wine. I'm going to put in the fridge two servings. I'm going to put on the counter two servings, and I'm going to put in the freezer three servings. Tomorrow night, we're going to taste a serving from the counter, a serving from the fridge, and a serving from the freezer. In two nights, we're going to do the same exact thing. A serving from the counter, a serving from the fridge, and a serving from the freezer. In exactly one week from now, we're going to drink that last freezer serving and compare it again to all the others. Right. So we put that, we were just curious if you put wine in the freezer for long term, in this case, a week. Let's say you didn't want to drink during the week and you came back. Yeah, it's like if you only drink on Sundays, you might want to consider this. Otherwise, probably not. Right. And then we just, we want to see when you defrost that wine in a week, what it's going to taste like compared to how the wine tasted as we record this podcast or this part of the podcast right now. We're going to be recording every night that we try these wines and compare it to what we experienced right when we opened the bottle. We're only going to taste the counter fridge and freezer wine for three nights because like we were just discussing, we think that's a pretty typical, you know, way that people would enjoy or try and save leftover wine. Chuck did mention he uses a rubber stopper and a pump that removes the air from the wine. I do too, typically. But for this experiment, we're not using anything other than how you would seal your bottle with a cork or a cap. Bottles and corks. Yeah. Now, I have some hypotheses about what's going to how this is going to go, but I'm going to keep that to myself until the end. I wouldn't mind knowing the sommelier's guess first. My guess? There might be some shame involved. Is that why you're, you don't want to say it? <laughs> I suspect the fridge is going to be the winner. I even saying that, I store my red leftover on the counter because I don't like taking it out of the fridge and waiting, it, waiting for it to come to room temperature. Red wine right out of the fridge is too cold. Yeah. If you pour a glass, you should wait 10, 15 minutes, which is what we'll be doing all when we taste test on day two and day three all the samples will be the same room temperature right let's talk a little bit about the wines that we're using for this experiment which we are also reviewing in this episode and then we'll we'll talk a little bit about how we're going to taste it again on night two and three and seven so the wine that I'm using is um, Carnivore Cabernet Sauvignon from California. Happens to be 2019. This is a really popular wine. Uh, it's uh, sold all over uh, North America, maybe elsewhere. Uh, it's a classic California Cabernet, just under 20 bucks. And so I wanted to take something that I know really well, and Chuck did too. Uh, so that as we're tasting it, day two, three, and seven, you know, we can really detect anything changing there. 
Chuck, what do you have? I have a classic Italian table wine. It's Fantini Montepulciano di Abruzzo, Lot 23 Organic, $9.95 a bottle. Something that you would typically drink on a weekday and not finish. So right. really good for this experiment. And just to be clear, we wrote and recorded the reviews of these wines as we record this episode, not on day three or seven. They're, they're being reviewed right out of the bottle. And let's just unpack how we're going to taste to be completely fair to the wines that we're tasting so we don't have any bias. The way we're going to taste these wines is somewhat blind, effectively. We know what the wine is, so it's not a true blind tasting, but we're not going to know which one came from the the counter, the fridge, or the freezer. So somebody else, or considerate others, are going to be marking the glasses one, two, and three on the bottom, and then they will be putting the respective wines in the glasses. We won't know where they came from. And then, once we taste them, we're going to rank them. Maybe Chuck, tell everybody how we're we decided to rank these. We have exactly three different samples to rank. So we're just going Olympic style, gold, silver, bronze. Right. What do you like the best? And then we'll see as the three days goes by or the two additional nights goes by, which ones stand up the best. And what that means to us is taste as close to the freshly opened bottled wine as possible. For this episode, we're going to do something a little bit different. We want to familiarize you with the wines up front. So they were going to do the two reviews right now. And then the next sections that you hear will be nights two, three, and seven. So for my wine, I have Carnivore Cabernet Sauvignon 2019 from California. I mentioned earlier, it's a pretty popular wine, and there's good reason for that. And it screams classic California Cabernet. This wine is sold throughout North America, possibly other places, which you will be might be surprised to hear. This is the first time I'm tasting this. And I think a lot of people have seen or encountered Carnivore uh, out and about in, in you know, their shopping or at restaurants. It's big. Right away, hits your mouth, and there's no mistaking that it's a California cap. It's full of plum and blueberry and cherries, lots of ripe fruit, dark stone fruit. It's got a really kind of jammy mouthfeel really it is really delicious it's a it's a slight bit sweeter than i would typically enjoy but i think a lot of people those would be bonus points i would definitely put it up against any big flavored you know meat dish barbecue ribs actually because of that little bit of sweetness it drinks really well on its own which you can't always say for the big guys because they're sometimes a little bit harsh or tannic this one's really well integrated for a wine produced on that scale uh, somebody's done a really good job. I think for the price, it's a it's a pretty good result. Carnivore Cabernet Sauvignon 2019, $17.95. Four stars out of five. Chuck, tell us about your red we're using for this experiment. Classic example of an Italian table wine. Exactly what you drink with lunch or weekday dinner and probably not finish a bottle of. It's medium body, is dry, but most noticeably are the firm tannins that really dry your gums out on the finish. You're going to get plum, dark cherry, licorice, and oak on this bottle of Fantini Montepulciano di Abruzzo 2019 organic wine, 9 dollars and 95 cents three out of five stars welcome back to day two of the taste test we each have our three samples lined up one from the counter one from the fridge one from the freezer they've all come to room temperature they've all been labeled we're going to blind taste them and olympic rank them gold silver bronze right we don't know which wine is in these cups So in front of me, I have three glasses of wine. Each one's labeled one, two, and three. Uh, I do not know which wine in the glass came from the counter, the fridge, or the freezer. Uh, I'm going to taste them all, smell them all, taste them all, and see if they've changed at all since yesterday. And Chuck's going to do the same thing. I'm starting just the one labeled number one. There's a there's a new scent that has shown up since yesterday, and it's a, almost a licorice scent. In a good way or a bad way, would you say? Um, or neither. Just kind of, it's, it's there. It's just, yeah. <laughs> okay. it's, it's just there, but it, it, it wasn't yesterday. This is glass one. We're going to taste it. So it's, glass one's not as vibrant. It's not as fresh and bright as it was yesterday. Fruit's still there. I mean, it mostly tastes like the same wine, just a little dull. The glass labeled number two. Licorice is not there. Okay. Tastes more like yesterday than glass one. Some of the fruits softer, rounder. Glass three, no licorice. The scent is not as strong as uh, two. It's just the overall, like when you stick your nose in the glass, it's just not as pronounced as it as two and as yesterday. This is glass three. Another taste of, of three. Hmm. 
Can I make a prediction? Yeah, I was just going to ask. I'm going to make a prediction that number one came from the counter. Okay. Three hasn't changed much. So it hasn't changed much. Do you think that one came from the fridge or freezer? Oh, <laughs> oh. I'm going to hope fridge. Hope. Why hope fridge? Because freezing wine. It's freezing wine seems crazy. <laughs> it does seem crazy. It's not as convenient. I'll tell you that. No. Three is the closest to what I had yesterday. It's lost a little bit of brightness, but not as much as is two and definitely not as much as one. So that's really interesting. Okay, I'm going to go three gold, two silver, and one bronze. So I have the secret Dakota ring with me. So it's written down the number and what wine is in the glass to the corresponding number. Okay, one was counter, as I expected. <laughs> Because okay. you'll remember earlier, I said I keep my wine on the counter, so I kind of know what's going to happen. A little counter experience. Uh, as I feared, two is fridge, three is freezer. And you like the freezer the best. That was your gold, I, right? Yeah, it was as close. It was closest to what I tasted yesterday, and I'm I'm shocked. Shocked, I tell you. Shocked and amazed. Are you amazed <laughs> or just angry that you might have to put your reds in the freezer? <laughs> I I can't see that happening. Interesting. I like that. I'm really curious to see how that changes tomorrow. I think tomorrow will be a little more telling, given more time. All right, so I'll give mine a go now. Sample one. Pretty close to the original. Still has fruit. Still has those dry, grippy tannins. Body tastes the same. Pretty close overall, I'll say. Okay. Sample number one. Um, sounds like almost no change. Pretty close. Yeah, pretty close. Sample number two. I keep my leftover wine in the fridge. Right. This tastes like one day old fridge wine. <laughs> I'll make my prediction now. Okay. Let it be said that number two is the fridge wine. Sample number three. This one's different than all of them, for sure. Just on the nose. Didn't even taste it yet. Just smelled it. Mm -hmm. It's different. I had the same experience with my, my first one. This one's lost a little flavor. Has a rougher finish. Tastes probably, if I had to categorize it, a little oxidized. Mm. So a little more cardboardy like just muted overall this is the counter one for sure that's number three, three i think is my counter let's rank them okay sample number one gold number two silver number three bronze in order so i just had the bronze i'll look at the bottom of the glass it's the counter one so so far counter double bronze double <laughs> loser yeah silver place goes to the fridge the freezer's gold on mine too whoa what do we do now? We got to uh, put our leftovers in the freezer so far? I, mean, I don't know. I, I'm gonna, we're going to have to write a very scholarly article to all the wine professionals in the world. They're going to think we've lost our minds. I don't want to put my red in the freezer. It's, you got to defrost it and drink it. It was a whole thing even tonight just to do this test. Yeah, it was. But we'll know tomorrow if there's enough of a difference between the fridge and the freezer to know that it's worth it. That's right. The seven day, I... I'm not even going to try and predict, but let's see how tomorrow goes. We'll check back in with you tomorrow night for day three's tasting. Welcome back. We're on our third evening of the tasting. We have our three glasses lined up just like yesterday. They're all room temp, ready to go in our blind tasting. Sean, do you want to start it off? Do we do predictions or no? Predictions? I predict I'm really not going to like one of these wines. <laughs> There's going to be an odd man out here. I mean, I've been thinking about this all day, uh, literally all day. Are you like, thinking, why is the freezer one so good? <laughs> essentially, yes. You know, like I, I, but I texted you, what did I text you yesterday? Those are the, were those jackasses that put the wine in the freezer? I'm going to go reverse order today, mix things up. I'm going to start with number three. Now, there, okay. I don't know what's in them, but I'm just going backwards. Uh, th ooh. Three smells uh, very fruity, very fruity, very ripe. Tastes nice. It's not as full. I mean, I probably said the same thing yesterday, but it's not as full as it was the day we opened it. Nothing offensive. Okay. Two. Hmm. Two tastes better than three. Nothing uh, Nothing off. It's just a little brighter. A little closer to the original. Yeah, a little bit. Exactly. Okay. Now, number one. Uh, I know yesterday I said one of them had licorice. This one now has barely any scent. Do you get any of that licorice today in either? No. Or in any of the three? None. No. So whatever that was, that dissipated. Yeah. So whatever is in glass one, I can barely smell. Number one has lost its aroma, you're saying? A lot of it. 
and the flavor is thin. Nothing stands out. You're like none of the original fruit, the blueberry cherry, none of it's popping out. It's just sort of red wine, berry sweet taste. Is it rougher than you remember the original? Original is pretty smooth. Number two is going to get gold. Three silver. One bronze. Let's see. Once again, my my cheat sheet was prepared for me. So how'd you okay. score? Okay, so this is good. First one's good. My bronze is the counter. That's the one I just tasted that didn't have any appreciable <laughs> benefits in it. Number three, my silver freezer, which means fridge won this round for me at gold. And how close were your gold and silver fridge and freezer? Excellent question. Very close. The fridge was just a little bit brighter. They're ex- they're extremely close. It's just the fridge is a bit brighter. So for my for my tasting, what we know is consistent is keeping your red wine on the counter is not the move. We definitely want to go into the fridge. You want to mess around and go to the freezer. You can. <laughs> it's, I don't think it's worth it. But we're, you know, Chuck, I'm a change sommelier. I will be going into the fridge like you from now on. I think the freezer probably is going to be the freshest, but the fridge is, is the way to go for sure. The counter, I think, is not good. All right. So now back to the Italian table wine. Taste number one. Pretty muted, not too much happening. Definitely, it's it's lost a lot of the aroma. It smells more oaky than fruity now. Prediction? And yeah, it, it tastes like it smells. Not too much going on. The tannins are still there. This is the countertop wine. <laughs> Number one. Okay. Number two, already smells and tastes better. Closer to the original. Not as bright, not as tasty, but definitely in the ballpark. Better than one. Moving on to number three. Three is pretty close to number two. So I'm, I definitely have it fridge and freezer or freezer and fridge. It's a toss up between those two right now. I'm going to say three smells brighter, fruitier, closer to the original than two. I'm going to say three is the best one. Three is better than two. Three is the gold. Two is the silver. One is the bronze. So now to reveal the scores, I rated the freezer gold, fridge silver, counter bronze. So same as yesterday, no change. The freezer was the best. The fridge, pretty close. The counter was a distant third. So we're in, we're in vicious agreement that the yeah. counter is not it. We're not we're not doing counter. No, can't you're, can't go counter. No. So if you're a savage like me and you're listening, no more counter storage. Not the way to go. No, not approved. The fridge That's, is right there. Pop it in. So for your average storage of red wine, two to three days, we say put it in the fridge, even though the freezer tasted a bit better. On day seven, we're going to check back in with you with the final freezer tasting. Back with you on day seven of the taste test. We have the frozen wine in front of us. It's now defrosted and come to room temperature. We're going to give it a try now. Do you have any predictions? I don't think this one week test is going to hold up. When I poured it out, I've noticed tartrate crystals or what's called wine diamonds and if wine is held at a really low temperature they can form it's not supposed to really do anything to the wine um, but you are taking something out of the wine so we'll see i do notice a little bit of sediment on the bottom of my glass probably tartrate crystals yeah nothing too off-putting or anything yeah they're harmless you could you could you could eat them yeah it looks like a little sugar i'd say yeah those are them wine diamonds all right so let's try it and i'll try mine so it's very different I don't think it held up. It tastes like old wine, sort of like old wine that's been sitting on the counter for too long. It tastes a little musty, grapey, cardboardy. Mm. There's no fruit left in it. Oh, wow. Yeah, it, it. this wine broke down. Not really, not servable. I don't even think I drink it myself. So how about yours? I see you swirling your glass. Yeah. Does it smell the same? It smells good. Like, Does it? It's not as powerful a smell as it was a week ago, but... It's, you know, I can still sort of smell fruit and stuff. So that's interesting. Um, I'm going to have a try. It's not bad. There's a there's a weird, the finish is weird. Like it's really muddy, muted. I'm having a hard time at this one picking out. Like I'm just looking at my notes from the review. Like I was talking about plum and blueberry and cherry. Now it's just like red fruit. It's, it's I can't pick out any of the specific berries. Yeah, it's drinkable. It's, it's 
but it's not a, you know, if we open that up, it wouldn't be a four out of five star wine. Okay. Yeah. But drinkable, like you, you would drink a glass of that today and be happy with it. Yeah. I mean, to me, I think I'd be kind of puzzled by it because it's just very muted. But I think if you were served this, you know, somewhere, you, you'd you be fine. Okay. So yours held up better than mine did because I, I would never serve this. I wouldn't really kick back with a glass of this either. Overall, we do not recommend freezing your wine for long periods of time. It, we proved for a couple of days is not that big a deal. It works for a few days, for a week, no. Nah. I am still not going to be freezing my wine, but I will be putting it on from the counter into the into the fridge from now on. Yeah, you've been converted. <laughs> I'm fully converted. For two, three days, put your reds in the fridge. Don't expect them to last a week in the freezer. And don't put it on the counter. Agreed. I can't believe you store your counter wine, your wine on the counter. Didn't taste right. Yeah, I've been exposed. I exposed myself. Yeah. Well, we all make bad decisions in life. <laughs> Clearly, we're making them for a long time. <laughs> I can tell you right away, it's it's day, it's second day fridge wine because that's what I do. You go, you go to your friend's house. What is this three day fridge wine? You're serving <laughs> me? Like, oh. I could ruin this episode. <laughs> down this <time. laughs> Don't do it again. Now you're making me nervous just watching <laughs> you juggle those glasses. Moscato coconut water wine of beverage that I need to open. I every time standing right there in the fridge, just looking right at me, and I open the door. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, why did you buy that? So fridge your reds. <laughs> Fridge of Reds. I don't know how you say it. I, I fridge of oh, Reds. Really? Oh, Fridge of Got it. <laughs> I don't think that's how you say it. I don't know. That's how I said it just now, but I don't think that's how society says it. You caught me off guard. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Wine Podcast for everyone. Be sure to rate and review us wherever you get your podcasts as it helps other people find us. Yeah. Tell your friends about the podcast. We know they drink wine too. <laughs> for more information on any of the wines we discuss, go to nosnobwine.com or check the show notes for links. The Wine Podcast for Everyone is a production of No Snob Media. Mm-hmm.